Dr. Destruction's Big Top Radio Broadcast. After midnight, WLIP. Showtime Ghoulies here on Dr. Destruction's Big Top Radio Broadcast coming at you live from AM 1050 WLIP. Lilith Lovecraft is in the house. Things are about to go down. Uh, we have a very fiendish guest tonight. Uh, but before we can get to that, we do have to give a quick shout out to some fine local businesses. That's right. You want to visit JJ Blinkers in downtown Antioch. Follow them on Facebook for all of their fabulous specials and sales. JJ Blinkers is your joke, magic, and year-round high-quality costume shop, but they're also your rubber chicken, whoopee cushion kind of a store. In the back half of the shop, you'll find all of those fabulous costumes, as well as wigs, masks, tiaras, boas, theatrical makeup, face painting makeup, silly hats, displays and decorations, crazy, goofy hosiery, costume jewelry, and much, much more. In the front half of the shop, you'll find all of the over-the-hill and age-related gifts, jokes, tricks, gags, pranks, novelty whoopee cushion items, hand buzzers, rubber chickens, a full magic shop, and loads of other silly, crazy items, including their tastefully tacky, slightly raunchy adult room with bachelorette and bachelor party items. That's J.J. Blinkers, 896 Main Street in downtown Antioch. Mike Bjorn's Clothing in downtown Kenosha. Affordable, first-class formal wear. Save your groomsmen money. We rent any tux or suit style in the industry for $139.99 or less. Complete tuxedos starting at just $109.99. And they also feature many novelty items, hats, ties, top hats, and much, much more. That's Mike Bjorn's Clothing, 5614 6 Ave in downtown Kenosha. Arnie Screen Printing, Custom Screen Printing, Photo T-Shirts, and Custom Vinyl Lettering. 75, 23, 22nd Ave here in Kenosha. And don't forget to tell them Dr. Destruction sent you. Do you own a local business or have a project you would like to get the word out about? Well, let me tell you, radio is your medium and the Big Top Radio Broadcast is your show. Sponsor the Big Top Radio to help us continue to deliver quality content to you, our loyal listeners, and to help your business or project grow. Give us a call and become a sponsor today at 262-748-7564. All right, that's fantastic. And uh, all right, is the caretaker with us? Yes, I am, Dr. Destruction. <laughs> All right, good Hello. to hear you. Of course, we have the caretaker from the Fiendish Phantoms uh, up-and-coming band and soon-to-be horror host. Uh, that is a rumor that's being dug up, yes. Ooh. That could be happening. If kind of actually heard something on the TV, actually, on uh, Crimson Theater about that, too. Oh, <laughs> was there a slip of the lip? <laughs> yeah, there was. I was... Uh, I was not going to lie, I was actually laying down on the couch, and the movie was good, but I was slipping in and out, and then all of a sudden I heard that, and I was like, whoa, that's news to me. No, but I... <laughs> <laughs> well, fantastic, and uh, well, we are talking to the caretaker from the band, the Fiendish Phantoms. Fantastic, and what's what's going on with you guys? Give us the rundown. 
The scoop. Well, the rundown is obviously um, we are thrilled to be a part of uh, the Spank Away um, Cancer event for um, uh, Christopher K. House. Because uh, he, him and his wife, I believe, if I'm correct, uh-huh. uh, uh, got diagnosed with some a little bit of cancer going on there. So we want to help out as much as possible. And those things are really necessary. Yeah, these, these days, benefits yeah. are really important. But well, it sounds like it's going to be a fun show all the way around. Mm-hmm, and uh, we, uh, um, anything that we sell, you know, T-shirts, CDs, whatever we sell, half of the proceeds we're going to donate to as well. So. Oh, and you're one of those bands that when you hear your band, you have to have the CD immediately. So there that's you really go. cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. And, and, um, and then, of course, if I have a mistake, you can let me know. But March 10th, we will be playing with uh, uh, your band, the Roosevelt Dolls. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, you know, uh, what are we calling that? A Night of Creatures and Features. Yes, I'm really looking forward to that. Really looking and, forward to uh, that one. There will be a presentation of Milwaukee Horror Hosts at that, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we can get any of those uh, guys up the, around, you know. Um, we're trying. We're working on some things. Trying to make some things happen, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I heard, um, um, uh, I forget his name. I know what he looks like. It's the no-neck guy. The too loose no-neck, yeah. Yeah, too, yes, yes. I apologize for not knowing that. But, uh, he's kind of not wanting to do things like that but i can kind of understand that too he's well he's at a, he's at a different point in his life and he's uh that was a different time in his life and uh that's uh seems to be the case but that's okay that's yeah it's, a- it's cool that people respect that too though you know oh you got you have to yeah you know that's that's their choice they want to they want to make and uh you know there'll be some uh we'll try to work on get some other hosts out there for that and uh we'll we'll have a good presentation I think you know. You know. I mean. I, I mean. All said and done, I think I, I still have the long. I'm still the longest running host myself. <laughs> even in right? even in Milwaukee, with all due respect to uh, the other three. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that is true. I did have a little bit of a um, not a mishap, but a, a little roadblock in um, trying to get a little, you know, for the horror host for a set for myself. I live in an old house, and I have this really cool-looking chair. It might not be as cool as the one that Lilith, Lilith gets to sit in, but uh, oh, it's going like thing. that, and it won't. I can't get it through the door. Oh no! <laughs> so my house, it's one of those. It's, it was like built in 1944, so everything did, is small. Did you try all uh, you know angles and? Mm-hmm. Could you take the legs off the chair or no? That's what a lot of people were telling me, but that's not. Um, really where the problem is. The problem lies in that it's just the back curves back, so that adds width. So if oh. I try to go sideways... I got you. And, and then the arms, they really protrude outward. You know, it's like the chair that Barnabas Collins used to sit in. Okay. On the old TV show. Wow, that's pretty bad when you can't get a chair through the door. <laughs> I don't know, you don't have a big uh, picture window or nothing, huh? No, we. I still might figure something out, but I might have to go and uh, look at some antique shops or uh, um, secondhand stores for an older chair. We'll have to see. Okay, never. You know, keep your eye on the curb too. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is true. <laughs> people. Um, th- what's that? People throw away uh, cool stuff all the time. It's unreal. Right, right, right. Um, I did want to bring up uh, something to it. You know, it's kind of real, real horror, and I just wanted to take the time to, to um, you know, and I don't know if the listeners know about it. I know it was on, they mentioned it in the news right before, but another school shooting. Those things oh, yeah, that's on. always very sad. Another one of those is going on, and uh, what is a 15-year-old kid making bad yeah, decisions? and crazy. Yeah, yeah, and access to weapons he's not old enough to have, and uh, yeah. that's it's it's really something else. Yeah, I just wanted to bring that up because, you know, that, you know, just horrible. I just wanted to make my condolences for for all the people with that going on and stuff. It's bad. Yeah, so. it is. <clears throat> yeah, those are always truly tragedies until we can really change how we respond to such tragedies. 
we're going to ha- continue to have them, um, which is really sad to hear, but yeah, that's what I go and to school also, for, is to work on uh, responses to such situations. And it's, it's on so many levels, too. It's it's not just, you know, that you got a gun. I mean, that's a big part of it, obviously, but then you never know if the person, you know, never got treated for a mental illness exactly. or anything like that, too. Yeah. And no. a lot of, even though... The mental health needs to be talked about um, in these situations, and a lot of people will point to it doesn't need to be talked about because it can add a negative stigma to mental health. But I think by having more and more conversations about mental health, we can completely remove that negative stigma versus create more of it. Mm-hmm. And then it'll make people who do have the mental illness feel that, that it's easier to open up about it. Exactly. They're being closed off until the boiling point, and then something like, you know, that happens. So. Exactly. Right. Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah, it really is. I do know, um, change subject a little bit here. Um, I do, I would believe that Lilith can't wait till her wrestling report tonight, I would imagine. It's going to be interesting, for sure. Was it the 25th anniversary, I would believe? Yes, the 25th anniversary. The, the, the doctor even tuned in and watched Raw. Yeah, I got a little bit of, I seen Roman Reigns get, get, Put down. Yeah. So Roman Reigns, the the one of the wrestlers that the WWF kind of shoved down their fans' throat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Awkward. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I, I kind of stopped watching WWE because I can't stand this man. But that's okay. That's no, okay. trust me, I can't stand him either. He's that person that. I begrudgingly accept his product. I have my teeth gritted as every time I buy one of those video games, my teeth are gritted and I'm going, oh, yay, Vince McMahon, thank you for making me buy another one of your products. And that's how I feel every time I watch Raw. That's how I feel every time I deal with the WWE, to be quite honest with you. Vince McMahon is a very frustrating man to deal with. Well, yeah, they don't really have any competition either, you know. I mean, I usually watch a lot of the competition just because I'm a guy who always roots for the answer dog, so. Yeah, I can understand that. And but then I saw Stone Cold did some stunners, so I saw oh, that. Oh, yeah. There. That was probably one of the most exciting moments for me was the Stone Cold stunners because I am a mark for them, I'll admit it. It just he made me moved around out. pretty good, too. I was kind of surprised. He yeah. Looks, he looks like he's in decent shape. He, did, he looked really good. I thought he looked really good. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, got, I got one more other question, wrestling question for Lilith. I'm sorry, Doctor. I'm oh, yeah, that's fine. Question. In your show here, but. That's all. Right. That's fine. <laughs> um, in uh, Impact Wrestling, you know of uh, Rosemary? Yes. Oh, okay. I was just making sure because she's really, really cool. She is uh, awesome, and she's had to deal with some really horrible situations with um, Oh, sexy star this past yeah, year. That yeah, ridiculousness. Of, uh, Mitchell Libre, yeah. Yeah, all that craziness and everything. Rosemary's really cool, though. I love her career and what she's doing. Yeah. One of, the, one of the top women, I'd say, of right now. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh and uh, I also uh, apologize that the rest of the Phoenix Phantoms and myself love the skit so much of your head in a pan too bad uh, the, de- uh, the degradation that I have to deal with it's horrible <laughs> nice choice of words there <laughs> well <laughs> at, at least the pan didn't cover your beautiful face so. yeah at least there wasn't any egg salad in the shot <laughs> <Yeah>. right <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness the crazy shenanigans we get into though on that show well what yeah I- you know, I'm I'm probably not the only one of the people who watches your show that admits that. Yes, the movies are fun, but we stick around for the skits. Well, the next skit's going to involve the full body size pan, uh, <laughs> lots, lots of gauze, and uh, four gallons of milk. Really? <laughs> sounds like a, sounds the creation like a, scene. Uh, <laughs> sounds like something from Nickelodeon back in the day with the oh, slime in it. No, 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 no slime intended. <laughs> That's another show. Uh, <laughs> I did like the guy who played Dracula, though. Yeah. Oh, Xander, Xander Vorkov. Yes, he's great. Uh, yeah, he, he was. He was. He was pretty cool. You know, with the, how they made his voice. What do you think of the fangs? <laughs> yeah. 
I couldn't believe that he actually killed the, you know, no spoiler alert, but <laughs> the, that he killed the guy with the ring. That was shocking. I thought that guy was going to make it. Oh, yeah, no, they were pretty, that was pretty clever of them because, yeah, he was like coming off like the hero and then uh, he got it. That was, that was really a, 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 you know, pretty, that movie's actually pretty, pretty good for all its, uh, oh, yeah. You know, its uh, l- lack of budget and it was trying to be a universal horror film for the audience. We are talking about Al Adamson's Dracula vs. Frankenstein, which you can still catch one more showing of, uh, on the Crimson Theater on cable channel 14 this Friday at midnight. I don't know what else you call it. It's officially 12 a.m., but midnight, midnight, there's not a midnight on a, in the, uh, no. That is anyway, <laughs> it, yeah, it's, it's hard be. to explain. Trust me, I try to explain it to people too, and they, you know. yeah, you yeah, see what I'm it's saying. Weird. But uh, maybe that, we should just call it the witching hour. But the witching hour is actually like three o'clock or something. Right. Yeah, well, we know all about that hour too. Yeah. But uh, so that'll be on at uh, uh, midnight. We'll just say midnight Friday, which means 12 a.m. Saturday. However, you want to look at that, and that is uh, that is on the Kenosha Media dot org and the Kenosha Media Roco channel. Um, if you want to check it out again. But uh, Saturday night, we got a lot of good uh, good responses from uh, people that were picking it up for the first time. So, oh yeah, I I, uh, I work with a lot of people, you know, that that love the old uh, horror host and stuff. So they're starting watching your show; they like it. Yeah, I kind of almost kind of qualify for an old horror host now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it's. And I don't know if you guys would ever do this, but if there was like a Olympics of horror hosts, I think you'd probably win at a few events. Well, thank you. You yes. at least look like you're in better physical shape than a lot of them. So. <laughs> I want to know which events specifically. This, this is interesting. Yeah, what kind of events would be at a horror <laughs> yeah. host Olympics? I don't know. There'd probably have to be something with a rubber chicken, so oh, Sven Gulli nice. could at least win one. <laughs> 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 so you're saying he's got? he needs a handicap? I don't know if I should be saying this because it's just I do do is once I am the uh, horror host, I don't want <laughs> he's gonna come after me. No, just oh, he wouldn't come after. No, we wish he'd come after us. If you're Sven, if you're listening, we'll take a call. <laughs> it's time to give Sven some guff. He deserves it. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you know, there are other hosts in other cities, and now because he's national, he's invaded some of the other hosts. <laughs> territory yeah. which it was kind of unheard of back in the day and uh so it's kind of funny there's you know i i don't know what to say i just hope that i don't ever you know i you know but you you never know if you're stepping on people's toes oh you know you, you just you I, never mean to you're just gonna have to wor- worry about that uh that green, the green pepper and, the green pepper in madison uh uh he, he, you gotta worry about him you think i should give him a call first or you think we'll be fine <laughs> I didn't call nobody when I started. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. But uh, I got to go back to that movie that you showed too, if you don't mind. Uh, Dracula versus Frankenstein. Yeah, the only thing that I didn't like about it, and you you both touched on it during the show, was the the Frankenstein face. The marshmallow yeah. Frankenstein. Yeah. Did they do that purposely so they wouldn't get like in trouble? Probably make it look so. Different? You know, that is a good question. I don't know the answer to, but I mean, I'm sure they were staying away from certain things that would look universal. Okay. Uh, or it was bad makeup. But it was. And the guy in the wheelchair, too, was awesome, too. I've seen him in other movies. I can't think of which ones I've seen him in. Well, he was in, see, he, he was in uh, House of Frankenstein with uh, with Lon Chaney Jr. So Lon Chaney yeah, Jr., Jr. was in that, and, uh, and J. Carol Nash. That was kind of the reason that they did that. Because they were in House of Frankenstein, and Al Adamson was really trying to—he was really trying to make a, a, a comeback to like the you know the classical Universal uh, movies. I mean, he had the he had the some of the you know uh, he had some of the actual mad scientist equipment from the original movie, and that predates that that same equipment ended up in uh, Young Frankenstein. So oh, okay, and uh, you know that that was one of the cool things, and. Uh, you know, he, I I just really like that. I like Regina Carroll. I mean, she was really hot when I was a kid. I was like, a, whoa. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There there are some scenes, mm-hmm. especially when you first see her and she's doing her uh, little skit on stage. Yeah. Oh, the Las Vegas skit. Yeah. Yep. 
<laughs> Some guy saying, well, you're nothing's way a ton, dear. <laughs> you got to see the song. I wonder if that song's on YouTube. I'm sure. It probably is. That, I mean, that, that song is, the whole movie is just, it's crazy right from the beginning, you know? Oh, it is. And then but it, but it, it moves along pretty well, though. I think that's one of the things it's got going for it. It's well, you know, to... then it's got a cameo uh, by Forrest J. Ackerman from Famous Monsters Magazine. And he's playing Dr. Beaumont. And Dr. Beaumont is a character that is, is actually in uh, Ghost of Frankenstein. And Dr. Beaumont is responsible for Igor's brain ending up in the monster. So, uh, all right, all right. and then the, uh, they had Angelo Rosetto, uh, the, uh, it was the, the, uh, the midget guy. He was in movies with Bela Lugosi. So they kind of okay. really did have, a, you know, Russ Tamblin, you know, he was in a lot of movies and he's played Rico and he played Rico in uh, West Side Story. And I think that he was in another movie called Rico as well. So, but the uh, Rico. <laughs> uh, and Jamie, um, he, you know, he did just a phenomenal job in that film, just like acting like he was like just like crazy. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, he might have been might have been loaded. <laughs> I mean, he might have, yeah, because you know he could he could have been he could have been, but uh, yeah. He 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 was acting pretty crazy. I think they they just didn't have the budget to you know if they would have had the budget to give him up in the Wolfman makeup, that would have yeah. been pretty cool. And I think they were trying to imply that, but you know uh, budget and money and um, you know since they spent that huge budget on that Frankenstein makeup. But at the time when I saw that, I saw it as a kid, and it seemed like it was really hardcore. It's almost like an exploitation film kind of feel to it. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. It seemed like a really, uh, you know, really heavy deal uh, uh, going on, and uh, I don't know. I just always had a charm for it. I think it was the probably on the Crimson Theater more than any other film. Hmm, okay. Right. Unfortunately, the, the uh, uh, poor, poor Regina Carroll died of cancer, and uh, and uh, the director got murdered. What? Yeah, the the director wow. was uh, he got murdered, and I think there was somebody he had living with him came to steal his stuff or something like that it was really tragic oh man i kind of want that i mean not not to make uh, light of that but i kind of do want that ring oh ring. right right that would be uh that would actually be a very cool ring to get right that would you be, know that that, that, cool. that was another that, that just even that ring back in the day when i saw that even that ring made the whole movie seem like really intense mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just as it's a wild, wild movie. It's got the carnival. It's got the freak show element going on. Uh, it's got the you know the, the little sideshow thing, which is really pretty. I don't know if that was a real thing, but it was not very much to look at. <laughs> right, right, right. Have you seen some of the horror movies that are getting remakes? I'm kind of shaking my head. Uh, I don't really go for those too much. But what what in, so, what exactly are you so, talking about? So, uh, they're going to be remaking the Wolfman, which I'm dreading. Is I've that the there. one that they're wanting to put uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson as the Wolfman? It might be. I'm not. Sure. I no, don't think, watch too much of the. I think they. I think Tom Cruise uh, ruined all that. I think they scra Universal scrapped oh, yeah, that whole. The mummy? I yeah. think they scrapped the whole thing now because, you know, they're they're. I, I don't know if that Hollywood can get away with. Uh, I don't know that they can get away anymore with what they've been doing with these remakes, and I think the mummies with Tom Cruise is an, uh, is a. Uh, a good example because I think the audiences now, uh, I think they're they've uh, grown up a little bit, and they, they, the audiences now want to see the, the classic stuff done in a classic manner. I don't think they can you know take these movies and make them into action movies anymore because with you know horror now has become so mainstream, so many things open the door, and people are looking back and they you know they're watching the old films and maybe you know if you see the original Frankenstein, even if you never saw it in your life. The first time you see it, it sticks with you forever, and it's a classic. And uh, I think the audience are, are really getting hip to this now, and they're not going to be able to make these films like they did. I mean, I just happened to catch, uh, there's a TV in the studio here, and I was just, you know, every once in a while I'll put something on, and I just caught a little bit <laughs> of that Lone Ranger movie that I was never going to pay money to see. And I, it was just all CGI. It was just, I can see why I bombed at the box office. I mean, that's the thing, too. I know... I remember when I uh, first uh, started watching horror films and stuff, um, the thing that got me was it looked, the effects looked so real. Right. You know, and like, 
horror films, that's what they were known for is the great special effects people. You know, like, you know, it really looked like a head flying off or whatever. Now when you do it in CGI, it's almost like we're going backwards and things look more fake now than they did back then. You know, I think, you know? I, I think the, I think the, I would think the studios are, they're saving a lot of money and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're probably paying kids to make these, uh, talented kids. They're probably making not a lot of money and all they're doing is sitting at a computer screen to make the stuff and, uh. Yeah, it is kind of sad. I do, I do, uh, remember, um, this might have been a few shows ago, maybe two, where, uh, Willis was talking about, um, like, uh, female directors and stuff and there was one, I forgot who she said it was. Um, you could probably re uh, remind me who it was, but that one of the female directors tries to use no CGI at all in her films. I don't. Are you talking about those two girls that were at the tr uh, convention that did the uh, body modification film? It might have been that. I don't know. I just remember Lilith talking. You guys were talking about like uh, females. I was mainly talking about, I think, the Soska sisters, and they go to great lengths to avoid using CGI. Yeah, that's who it was, yep. And if you watch American Mary, it is a movie that has quite a great deal of effects. You, I'm going to, I guess this is bordering on spoilers, but you have characters that are supposed to look like Minnie Mouse. You or, uh, Not not Minnie Mouse, uh, Betty Boop, sorry. Um, okay. You have characters that are extremely modified to look almost like a Barbie doll. You also have oh. characters missing limbs and other things. You have all these extreme modifications going on. And they actually brought in skin specialists who specialize in different types of body modifications to make sure that they got all of the presentation with their practical effects on point. They wanted oh, wow. the most accurate film possible. And a lot of people really diss American Mary for not being a box office hit. But it's really a very well-made film, and I consider it a masterpiece from the practical effects standpoint alone. And I I say go buy the movie because I think the Soska sisters need all the support they can possibly get. But the movie is available on YouTube right now, so gotcha. everyone can go watch it. And it's just such a great film, and it touches on strong female characters, and it doesn't get entwined with too much... There's a romantic element, but it's not a romance film. It doesn't overtake the film by any means. There's, it's just such a well-made piece of of uh, cinema. That's yeah. I'll have to definitely check that out. But that's cool that you know there are directors and filmmakers out there that are still trying to keep things. Absolutely, definitely. All right, we're gonna have to take that first break. So let's hold that thought. All right. All right. All right. We'll be back with the caretaker from the fiendish phantoms after these messages. Live and local, this is AM 1050 WLIP. Dr. Destruction's Big Top Radio Broadcast. After midnight, WLIP. We are back on Dr. Destruction's Big Top Radio Broadcast, and we're talking to the caretaker from the Fiendish Phantoms Band, and... Uh, where did we leave off now? We're in the CGI world again. <laughs> Anti-CGI league. Yes, and how um, movies back then, people were expecting in horror films for the cool effects and stuff like that. And now it's like we're almost going backwards where the effects are so computerized, it's almost silly. Here's my thing. So I'm really into Friday the 13th right now because of the video game. I play that video okay. game insanely. I also <laughs> really like Tom Savini, who had quite a hand in the video game. And he has quite a hand in actually developing a lot of the masks used in the WWE because he's a huge wrestling fan as well. Mm -hmm. When I look at all of these CGI films and I think about the history of Tom Savini and his coming to making practical effects, and I mean impressive practical effects. What are, who's going to be the next Tom Savini? Who's going to be making these effects in 20, 30, 40 years when we have so much so much reliance on CGI? Are there going to be young people who take an interest in learning how to make practical effects? And it's probably going to have to be indie films, too, because right. I don't know if the, the big companies will want to... They'll be on a time frame, you know, and that stuff does take longer. So, yeah, that's kind of... I don't know. And this is very true, so... 
I'm worried that we won't have people with enough interest in these practical effects to continue it on in the future. That's a really big fear of mine. But there are a lot of people in the indie markets that are still trying to figure out how to do things with uh, corn syrup and red food <laughs> coloring, and I think that's fantastic. Because I remember when I was uh, when I was little, my favorite magazine at the time was Fangora. Yes, I remember I would, used to buy that all the time. Yep, I would love like li looking at like how they made the effects and everything like that. And now, that I mean, it's I don't even know how those is they show how things are made anymore in those magazines because it's like you push enter and shift this and you know. <laughs> right, and I remember buying that buying that specific magazine a lot when I was in like late grade school, early middle school, and it really would describe to you how to how the effects were done or this movie is particularly good because of its practical effects and then it did mm -hmm. slowly start to transition away from that yep. now now like uh the um special uh features and stuff like that on dvds and blu-ray it's just everybody's in a green suit and everything's green with a whole bunch of electronics on it right? yeah yeah well <laughs> yeah, that's that's what we get <laughs> but i will say this in a way, it's good for the people that are like independent horror filmmakers and actresses and stuff and actors, because it's you know they they don't have a I mean they have a budget but they don't have a timeline as bad you know mm -hmm. where they can take the time to make it if they want if everybody agrees and they can actually make a really scary movie you know right and the independent market's getting more and more attention I find so many people when they find like. Amazon Prime's a great one for finding the lower budget indie films for free that you can watch. And people will find them and immediately post to Facebook, hey, I found this movie on Amazon that I never heard about, but it's independent and it's fabulous. And then everybody starts watching it. And I think that's really cool. Yeah. And as far as like new films that are mainstream, though, the only ones like that I really still like watch that are newer are a lot of the ones that just kind of are about like haunted houses or like insidious or the conjuring mm -hmm. where sure there's cg but it's so little it's more like the building of the suspense and that scary sounding violin you know stuff like that that gets you scared well it just depends on how it's directed too i think a lot of it is it can be a great tool can enhance a lot of things and it depends on how it's directed. If it takes over and takes control away from the director and the director loses the reins on the horse, so to speak, then uh, then it's lost. And the Shin Godzilla movie is a pretty good example of... Uh, <laughs> actually, probably, you know, the director really had control over that and uh, managed to really uh, minimalize a lot of the, you know, a lot of what he did with it. I mean, I know that it might, might have worked out with the budget, too, but they pulled it off. They, they made it a really cool... Uh, movie mm -hmm. definitely definitely i would agree I would agree but the cgi i we talk about the issue quite a bit on this show and i think i think the big markets are going to slowly realize that they need to step away from the cgi and start paying more and more attention to the independent films because when you have independent films like get out doing such a successful job in the mainstream market it's hard to argue with those numbers. I still have yet to see it. I want to see it. I still have not seen it, but I... I will be I honest. Heard it was I saw a good 45 minutes to an hour of it. And I thought that the premise and idea of the film was pretty decently executed. But there were a couple issues I had with it, uh, just from the message it was trying to send. I think it did a good job with what it was trying to do, but it missed the mark just slightly with a little bit too much pushing the message of the film versus the and it, plot. And the message kind of overtook the plot, basically, kind of? Yes, definitely. I think so, and some elements. But it, it was definitely a well-made film. It just was a little bit, a little bit uh, out there in some of the ways of communicating its message. Do you guys remember the movie The Strangers? Yes, I'm so excited for the sequel of that. The reason why I bring it up, I just got a quick uh, funny story about that movie. That was one of the ones where I had to go by myself, unfortunately. But, you know, sometimes you got to do that. Yeah. And, and 
and there was these two ladies in front of me and they weren't talking loud, but you could see they were kind of whispering throughout the film. And it was a little annoying, but I lived with it and everything. And at the end of the film, they turned around and started talking to me. And they were like, that was pretty, uh, what did you think of that film? And I was like, it was pretty good. I thought it was pretty realistic and stuff. She's, they're like, yeah, most of the blood would squirt that way and stuff like that. By the way, we work in forensics. <laughs> oh, wow. So we, the two women in front of me worked for forensics, so I found that kind of interesting. That's wild. Yeah, so that's, that's what they were talking about. <laughs> that's one that I actually am excited for the sequel to come out. Uh, their marketing campaign has been wildly crazy to watch with the fact that people were actively giving over their emails and their phone numbers to be stalked via the internet um, by this company that's producing the film. Um, that's been pretty crazy, and I think it's one of those one of the few films in the horror genre that came out during that time period that was very successful in the way that it it communicated with the market. I it was one of the first really like modern horror films I got to watch when it came out in theaters, and it had such a an impact. It was a very strong movie in what it was saying and doing. Mm-hmm. I don't want to spoil it for anybody who's listening, but the ending, I think, had a lot to do with that, too, because it's not what you're expecting. Right. It is. You know, everybody expects kind of like a wrapped-up happy ending, and it was kind of different than that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen it. i got to check that one out. Yeah, that's <clears> one i got to get you a copy of. I'm working on it. Yeah, it's, it's it's one of those where I don't think there was any CGI whatsoever in that, as far no. as I can tell. It was more of a suspenseful, almost, I don't want to say Hitchcock, but I don't know. You'll, I think you'll like it, Dr. Destruction. I, 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 I need to check it out. I, I, I haven't had much time to watch movies lately, but i got to make the time. Yeah, oh, that one's a good one. one's a good one. And uh, I don't know what you guys think about horror films that deal with, like, animals. But um, I'm trying to think of what was it called. It was on Netflix. It's uh, I, Oh, Backcountry, I think it's called. I have not. Did you see that one? that one? No, I don't have Netflix, so. Okay. I um, do, it was, but I have not heard of that one. Yeah, it's uh, it's about this couple and, and, and stuff like that. And they go out in the wilderness, and that's all I'll say. But it's really good. I liked it, you know. So oh, it's got. Oh oh. What? Well, I'll let you finish, and then I'll give you some breaking news. Oh, you can give me some breaking news. Why? Why do I want to cut you off? No, I was good. I was. <clears throat> I was going to talk more about it. I don't want to spoil the movie. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the great green one, uh, freak show uh, says, "Tell the caretaker he says hi." Oh. Oh. I say hi to the great green one back. Uh huh. The great green one. The great green one. Oh. <laughs> well, that's awesome. That's that's cool. Yeah. 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 We were we had a little conversation. Let's see. I'll I'll back it up here. See if I can. Yeah. Share more. You're you're being secretive huh? again. <laughs> uh, I'm being secretive. Yes. You're being shrouded in mystery. Shrouded in mystery on the big top radio broadcast. Uh, let's see. I can't find it. <laughs> it was uh, some. It was just a. Uh, he said, "What's the problem with green?" And I said something like, uh, "Nothing if I can wrap it up." And uh, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, he thinks he's I'm always a- about save the crabs too. Save the what? The crabs. The crabs. Like, uh, yeah, when we had our CD release party, uh, they uh, were like the hosts, and he was all talking about save the crabs. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, you were on his show, weren't you? Well, yeah, that was uh, for the... It was all filmed at our CD release party. Oh, okay. And then he added that into... Um, I think he was showing the movie The Giant Leeches. Okay. And, yeah, so... Well, that's interesting. That was looking... <clears throat> whoops, sorry. Oh, no, that's interesting. We, we never really managed to lock down the great green one as a, a solid advertised guest. For the big top radio, but you know he calls in once yeah. in a while. You know, uh, random calls. He's a little aloof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
He's I, I I get along with the guy. He's a, he's a really what I really like about him too is uh, and you find this in in bands and all over that they're not like this. But he's pretty much on on time with things, you know. Well, he's working diligently on his show editing every night, every yeah, single night that guy's at true. it. Yeah. <clears throat> he's doing a good job. He is, yes, definitely. Uh, he's, he's a good guy. And then I saw, I was looking at uh, some older pictures that you were posting, and I saw a picture with uh, um, uh, Malicious. Okay. The lady that he has on there with the red hair. Oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, she seems pretty cool, too. They all seem yeah. pretty cool. I've just never met the, um, the Drizzle Puss guy. I never met him yet. I know we got to we got to arrange a meeting of of all these great characters together at one venue. Right? Uh, yeah, it has to happen. Like when the weather gets better, you know, definitely got to get you down over here to the Madison area. Yeah, we got to set up a gig and uh, hang out, and maybe we can m meet up with Freak Show at uh, Madison. Take over Madison. That'd be cool. That would maybe, maybe my friend Mother Mayhem from yeah. Screaming Reekers yeah. could be there. <clears throat> but if you don't like New York accents, you might get sick of her after a while. Oh, we we deal with them. We deal with them all the time. <laughs> oh, it was, it was a fun time. Well, I, I appreciate you telling me you know, that free show uh, said what's wrong with Green and stuff like that. Well, he must have been listening to the show. I don't know. I guess maybe why he's editing the, his TV show, he listens to the radio show and, you know. I do remember uh, he meant the first time I ever heard about uh, you, Doctor Destruction. He said that he had like a, a little friendly rivalry with you, and he's like, "You gotta watch out for that, Doctor Destruction." Oh no, no. <laughs> well, there was. Did I ever tell you the story? I, I shouldn't even tell you the story because uh, later I found out I was a victim of a prank by the uh -oh. ne the nefarious green one. Yes, we'll just call him the nefarious green one. Uh, okay. But uh, yeah, I got a. I was in uh, Indy for uh, a show, and he gave me, like, a prank phone call. I'll leave it at that. Uh, okay. Uh, but other than I that... I could just imagine. <laughs> yeah. We all know his humor, so I could imagine. Uh-huh. Right, right. <laughs> but it was almost, like, stalker-esque. I didn't know what was going on, because he was pretending to be a female, and <laughs> the female was act acting like, you know, uh, we had an encounter in Cincinnati. I'm like, I know, I, I know that didn't happen, you know, and then we're, we're going on and on about it, and I'm like, you know, and I'm going, well, no, no, no. And then uh, there was some reference to uh, green makeup in my groin for a week, and I'm like, freak show, okay, because I thought it was for real, you know. I thought, you know, and I should have known better, but you never know. I mean, you got to figure if, you know, there was some crazy person on there, and. Once she brought up the color green, then I thought she'd have to be out of her mind if <laughs> she was with the nefarious, nefarious green one from Madison. <laughs> oh, oh, what a world. Horror hosts are a crazy group. Mm -hmm. They are. They are. Like I, um, <clears throat> The first one I ever got to see on TV when I was a little caretaker was uh, Ned the Dead. Out of Green Bay. Right, right. I heard a lot about him too. He's uh he's is he back doing his thing? Um, he pretty much um he has like a YouTube channel and everything, but uh I don't think it's any of new shows anymore. Okay. But he goes to he goes to conventions and there's a video out there with uh the nefarious green one interviewing him. <laughs> See so. how a name like that sticks? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the word nefarious is awesome. I mean, well, that's it, just it, it, well the word nefarious describes the great green one. <laughs> and I'm sure he likes the name because it almost sounds like a royalty, nefarious. Well, you like, know, it, it, King it, nefarious. it portrays him as like, you know, the illustrious playboy type. You know? Yes, it's a show. The player. Mm hmm. Ah, the, the wild world of horror hosting. It's only going to get worse. I hear some new ones are coming. I see new ones are crawling out of the woodwork every day. Oh, yeah. Throw the coffin. Throw the ground. Yeah. No, no, there's a, there's a ton. I could probably get a list before the next uh, break. Uh. <laughs> so, uh, how is this? Um, uh, I heard you're going to be there as well as the uh, Spankway Cancer doing an acoustic set. 
Yeah, uh-huh. What can we expect from you? Uh, well, an acoustic set, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the same songs or different songs? Oh, or? yeah, no, no, it isn't. It's different songs. Different oh, songs. Okay. Just something I've been wanting to do. You know, I do, do it here and there, but, you know, let's get this current. Uh, I'm going to try to drag some other musicians up there with me for that. You know, but I am uh, still administering the proper pressure to a certain drummer to actually just get the get the Roosevelt dolls up there. That would be cool too. Yeah, he was kind of getting a little fresh with Alice the other at, the, at our last show at uh, the Port. In those in the pictures of the whole bands all together, Who? he's like grabbing her arm. Alice, my little girl that oh, I have on oh, stage. Oh, you're talking about my drummer. Yeah. Oh well, I we uh, we have a uh, disclaimer on him. Uh, <laughs> we call him Hildong, and he's uh, he's basically uh, he operates under his own uh, lack of control. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, I guess a synonym. Oh, this is the great green one here. Uh, he says a synonym for ne- ne- nefarious is fiendish. Oh yes, yes, yes. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You have a connection there. I, we do like the color green with the scene this phantom. This is this is true. This is true. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Oh boy. Anyway, uh, we'll have to get more into uh, some of your musical influences in the next hour. You're able to stick with us, right? Yes, yes. The okay. ground is frozen. I won't be digging tomorrow. So. Oh no, digging tomorrow. That's great. You want to, you, you you know the the people that work in the industry they they are free usually on uh, the weeknights week mornings I guess I could call it this is a week morning and this uh, is true they've been trying to get me to work in the uh, the crematorium but I'm not I I'm allergic to ashes so I don't okay. like that big. <laughs> yeah you you don't you don't want to do that you want to be you, you're more of a hands on guy yeah yeah. I, I, then I have more of a connection, you know, lay, laying the people to rest or <laughs> vice versa. All right. <laughs> we are talking to the caretaker after all from the fiendish phantoms, and hopefully maybe could spin a couple tracks in the next hour, get into some of the musical influences, and uh, you never know. We might be prompted to get a call from the nefarious green one himself. You know, it's it's happened before. <laughs> get a proper schooling. From the nefarious <laughs> green one. <laughs> you got stories. Love, do you have anything you'd like to add to this? No. <laughs> <laughs> I will just stay silent on the matter. Stay silent over there. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what she's doing, don't you? What's that? You know, she's on her computer drooling over pictures of her abandoned buildings, you know. Oh, you know what? An abandoned building had just popped up when you said that. Uh, I'm not surprised at all. Oh, oh boy, well, we'd like to get a hold of her hard drive, huh? <laughs> I guess if you like abandoned buildings, if that's your thing. Well, we don't know what else is on there. <laughs> Mostly abandoned buildings. <laughs> See what I'm dealing with here, uh, caretaker. I, I hear you, but I'm not gonna lie to you. I kind of like looking at pictures of Chernobyl, so I kind of got a weird oh, thing going on. I am huge into Chernobyl. That's my dream vacation. <laughs> all right. That sounds good. All right. Well, we're coming up to news and weather and all that uh, important information, and we'll, we'll be back, and we'll be diving into the the lust that is had for abandoned buildings, nuclear <laughs> waste, waste sites, green and nefarious ones, and all things horror on Dr. Destruction's Big Top Radio Broadcast. And... Uh, the news is probably going to be scarier than anything we can come up with. <laughs> All right, we'll see you in a bit. The coolies are waking, it's late at night. The doctors on the TV do give them a fight. The movies are cheesy and so is the horse. Look out, Tommy, here's 13 ghosts. And Dr. Destruction's Crimson Theater. Bill's the monster, he heat her. And Dr. Destruction's Crimson Theater. Dr. Destruction's Crimson Theater, please, come out. 
live and local. This is AM 1050 WLIP. Dr. Destruction's Big Top Radio Broadcast. After midnight, WLIP. The doctor found the TV to give them a fright. The movies are cheesy and the sort of horse. Look out, Tommy, here's 13 goals. And Dr. Destruction screams in the air. Bill's the monster, eat her. And Dr. Destruction screams in the air. Dr. Destruction screams in the air. Coolies, come out. It is indeed Showtime Ghoulies, and uh, what an interesting <laughs> interesting show we have tonight, huh? We've, we've got it all going on, and we have Jamie. Oops. <laughs> That's all right. The caretaker. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> wow. So, you all deal. people should the know re- better. The reveal. <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, wait a minute. I get, What happens to me about every night somebody calls me by my name? Yeah, it happens occasionally. Hard to keep it... <laughs> Hard to keep it under wraps. Uh. That is all right, but yes, the nefarious one is listening. Uh, I know he is. I just got some messages from him. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm real curious. Is there anything we can actually say on the air? <laughs> Not really. Whoa, <laughs> that good, huh? <laughs> but, uh, uh, lo- uh, love-hate relationship you guys have, he says. So. Really? I don't There's no hate on this end. You know, what's all that no. about? <laughs> but then you said other things that make it, it's all love, but you, I can't repeat anything. <laughs> uh, I know what his, uh, I know what his love looks like. I sent you a picture. But anyway, what, what's some of the, uh, <laughs> what are some of the influences you had musically that inspired you to create the band, the Fiendish Phantoms? Well, Got to go back a little ways here in the time machine, but uh, um, it's kind of funny. Um, the first music I ever listened to that made me want to become a musician, like play, try to learn to play guitar, doesn't sound like anything that we play. Is uh, George Thorgood? All right. Well, you know, what you're, you know, he was channeling a lot of other performers, though. Mm-hmm. What, like I just liked how he, like that slide. Right. So when I was younger, all I did was I would, I did, on my uh, sister's acoustic, where the action was so super high, you could fit your thumb between the, the fretboard and the strings around by the fifth fret. Perfect for slide. <laughs> but uh, just and just making that noise where it's like, roo, roo, and that's all I would do. <laughs> but that was like my first thing, my first musical, wanting to become a musician. I liked music before then, but that was to take up the guitar. Mm-hmm. And uh, then pretty much was like, you know, Black Sabbath. You know, I know everybody says Black Sabbath, but, you know, it, it, they influence music. It's just uh, the way it is. Oh, um, absolutely. And then I would say uh, just a lot, of, a lot of 80s metal. Um, anything from Twisted Sister... Uh, like Iron Maiden, um, old old Metallica, Sabotage, all kinds of old metal. So there I don't know if you hear that in our music or not, but that <laughs> not not really. But that's okay. It's all <laughs> relative, you know. I mean, I will. We did get there was a for a, when we did have our CD release party um, thing. Uh, one of the newspapers out of Madison. You know, they would pick events to go see, and ours was one of them. And it's the coolest description I've ever heard of us, That I, at least for me. I thought it was the coolest. It says it was a Frankenstein mashup of Iron Maiden meets Rocky Horror Picture Show soundtrack. 
I thought that was kind of cool. For what was it? For you guys? For for our band. I don't know. Okay. Well, I don't know. Some who who said that? Uh, it was uh, the Isthmus out of Madison. It's like a local music uh, and events newspaper. Okay. Oh wow! We'll have to contact them when we do. We got to we got to <laughs> do a show up in Madison. Take the city by That's storm. What I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Nefarious green one can be there too. Uh huh. If he if he just shows up, I mean, he stood us up at Days of the Dead. You know, we were waiting. Yeah, this, right. This is true. This <laughs> is true. And as far as um the band um, let's see. I was just tired of trying out for bands or trying people that I have no clue who they are. So I basically just got friends that. Um, just my friends, and then they either knew how to do a little bit like singing or learn how to play the drums. And, like, I basically just said, I'm just going to get friends and they're going to learn how to play. There you go. That's a great idea, really. <laughs> I, and I've done that too. <laughs> so that, you know, you know, it can be, it can be, it can be a little uh, crazy at times too, because when you're, your your friends, you let sometimes a little bit of stuff go a little farther than you would if they were just like a stranger in the band. So okay, um, I don't know. I, I really I dig your band. I think it's got a, you guys got a cool formula and a cool lineup, and I hope that stays together because it's got a cool vibe. Uh, everything about it, it's, it's it's unique, is what it is. Oh yeah, oh it's it's definitely unique. I know we're gonna be staying. We'll be staying together for. Quite a while. I mean, yeah, I'll say that. Okay. So, there's there's no like breakup in the works or anything like that. So good. <laughs> uh huh. Well, you know, if you, as long as you don't get like the uh, the graveyard Yoko Ono uh, showing up or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no. <laughs> No, it's just you know, it, you know, not to get into any, but you know how bands, you know, like there'll be like one member that wants to practice more than the others, kind of thing. All right. And I just, I just got to learn to, to not be, as crazy about it. You, yeah. you heard how you heard how Johnny Ramone was with the band, right? Uh, no, uh, you can tell us that story. Well, well, Johnny Ramone with the Ramones was pretty much. Like, he even said that he had to be the, the bad guy a lot. Okay. That everybody kind of hated in the band. Because <laughs> he said if he didn't, you know, things might not get done or something. It's not like that with, with the Fiendish Phantoms, don't get me wrong. But it's just that I, I don't like missing practice and stuff like that. I'm kind of a... Yeah, I was always that way, too. And I know I understand completely because that caused a lot of friction between... Uh myself and members fortunately right now everybody wants to practice as much as i do so that's good well, that's cool that's cool but i just need just you know everybody has their own level of uh i don't know practice i guess <laughs> yeah well that's you know that's the way it goes it depends on how much you know people got other you know times and and whatnot but uh you know you can bet you can bet uh you know, if your band suddenly got signed to a pretty good record deal, um, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, you're going to have a manager, and you guys ain't going to be able to lay around and practice when you want to. Right, Not, right, right, they're going right. to make you practice, and they're going to have you work <laughs> with. They're going to have to. They're going to also have you work with um, music teachers and voice instruction and all that as well. You know, yeah, they will. They'll, they'll make sure of that. But well, luckily, I don't sing, so they won't have to try to change my voice. So that's good. <laughs> no, you got the singer guy. He's he's great. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, most definitely. I, it, like I said, there's no, there's no friction in the band whatsoever. It's just, you know, I like to practice a little bit more, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it goes, I suppose. But <laughs> so you know, you got all all your friends in the band now. Sometimes, but you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as like influences of all the other people in the band. That's what really makes us sound, like you say, unique and stuff is because, you know, I, I like the, the hard rock, 
metals, anything that sounds scary. Um, I, I know when I first started playing guitar, my relatives were like, can't you play anything happy? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know, I just like, you know, I guess I just like things in minor or whatever, you know. Uh-huh. And then and then with uh, the Night Stalker, um, he's really into the 80s, like, goth. You know, like uh-huh. uh, uh, Joy Division. Um, I think they're called Christian Christian Death. Christian yeah. Death, yeah. We can we can hear a little and bit. And then uh, the the Sisters of Mercy, which oh, yeah. I'm and I'm into a lot of the stuff that Night Stalker is too. But then he just kind of like went farther into it than I did. Uh huh. So, but that's where like how he likes to sing, and Jim Morrison is. You know, he loves the doors. Okay. So that that's another one. And uh yeah. And uh Beefy the Butcher, he learned to play the drums with us. Okay. He didn't know how to play the drums one at all. So he uh what we ended we were actually more of a punk band. That's how usually a lot of bands start, isn't it? <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> just a, just a punk, yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> So one, two, three, four. Well, we got that part down. But <laughs> but um, he started learning on Ramon songs, like a lot of covers of Ramones that we did, you know. And then now now it's just you know second nature for him, you know. So yeah, there yeah. you go. That's and a- then we uh, we just always wanted some type of some type of um, either like a horror theme or a sci-fi theme. You know, but then with our songs, we also kind of like to have them be kind of spooky. But then some of them you, you can you can relate to, or you can take it a different way, like a metaphor. You know, exactly. I know, like like um, the song um, "Does It Even Matter Now?" Mm-hmm. Um, it goes like, "Does it even matter now? You're you're buried now." Blah blah blah. That could be. You know, you take it literally, you know, like a horror film and be like, oh, you buried somebody or you're buried, so it doesn't matter. Or you could be like somebody talking about an addiction or something and, you know, they bury it. They're over their addiction. You know what I mean? You could take it different ways. So, yeah, I yeah. really do like that element of the songs. They have so much meaning to them, even if they do seem at the surface level to be these dark kind of creepy macabre songs they have such an actual meaning to them behind it yep and uh when we did do our uh our uh when the nefarious green one did um make his uh tv show and he put uh little bits of our cd release party mixed in there he picked ed as the song i was like god darn it (laughs) (laughs) i know it's a good song but it's not my favorite to play oh okay (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, that's the way it goes, you know. Right. right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, then there's the song Old Man, which, you know, it's not really spooky, but it, it has a, a really good meaning to it. I know I like that song a lot. I noticed the old man theme comes up a little bit a few times in your lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are, you know... The caretaker is pretty old, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's yeah. A, you know that's a good background of bands, and you really made your own thing with it, and cool songs, and yeah, I think this uh, a song like Ed's going to be one that's probably going to stick out to people. Just, uh, it's just off the wall. I know when I heard it for the first time at the club, I was like. Oh my God! <laughs> These guys are. I don't know what to expect, you know, because you guys came into the show, and I'm like, wow, who are these guys? You know, they're wearing makeup and looking spooky and everything, and I didn't know what you know. I didn't know what was coming going to happen, and then I was like, oh man, I love it. We were like, and my keyboard player, we we're both like going, yeah, this is great. Yeah, we were kind of we were a little nervous because you know the only band there, I think, not. Uh, well, Kenosha is what? How far is Kenosha from Milwaukee? Eh, about, about thirty, thirty-five miles. Okay, so, so yeah, we were like, you know, the one from the farthest that nobody knew. So we we're like, and then 
And then when we found, and then I know personally me, when I found out we were going to be playing after you, I was like, oh, brother. <laughs> it went fine, though. Come on. Well, no, but, you know, I, I mean, um, there was just, it was cool that there was so many, uh, like, horror-themed bands. Uh-huh. But, but, but in, uh, in Madison, mm-hmm. we're pretty much it. As far as I know, unless there's some ones I don't know, and uh, you know, whenever we go to Milwaukee, it's like it, it, it's just different because we're not used to playing with other bands that are kind of spooky. Well, what's Madison's uh, scene like now? All patchouli and uh, hippies, or what? <laughs> I hate the smell of that stuff. <laughs> you know what it was? You know what it was meant for? Yeah. Back in uh, history. To cover up the the smell of the dead bodies. Yeah, well, right. that's, I, well, now it's, yeah, I guess it's kind of serving the same purpose, you know, the, <laughs> the you know the dead fans' bodies instead. I don't know. No, the Madison <laughs> seems not not bad at, <clears throat> at by any means. It's just uh, different. Yeah, it, it's different. There's there's a punk scene and there's a metal scene. There's and... still a punk scene up there, huh? Is there still is the loft still there? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I've never heard of them around here. So, well, that was a. It was a. It was a place to play. The loft. Oh, oh, the loft that got burned down. I think. Oh, okay. If I remember. Then I know. Okay's Corral got burned down too. Oh, really? I remember yeah. playing there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, maybe that's. A- Everywhere you play, you burn it down. Well, we did. There's another place. <laughs> There's a few of them. Uh, the the uh, <clears throat> the circus or what was it? The sideshow in Oshkosh. We played there, and I guess it burned down the next weekend or something like that. I had heard. That's uh, Oshkosh. We got a police escort out of the city. That was so. Uh, they, you know, people weren't used to seeing people with uh, dyed hair and mohawks and stuff in 1980. Yeah, that's a wild but, story. <laughs> thought we lost you there for a minute. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm still here. But see, I'm not originally from Madison. Uh huh. I'm uh from up uh, in the Stevens Point area. Okay. You can kind of see why I moved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, there's no music scene really there. It's all right. cover band. Well, there's there's plenty of people that have moved to to be part of the music scene. Mm hmm. <clears throat> we were just talking about that last night with a Kenosha uh, buddy. So, <clears throat> I don't, I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm not gonna lie. When we when we played at the port, that was a lot of fun. That was oh, the, the port's the most a great fun place. I had in a while. We'll have to do another one there. Yeah, I just I just like how the the crowd is into it. You know, right. Yeah, they really get into it at the port. Yeah, that's a, that's a great venue. That's one of those places where you know you can go play and you don't have to. You know, it's not like you you you, you can entertain the crowd that's there, and it, it works mm-hmm. out great that way. As opposed to you know relying on the you know other places where it's real clicky. Mm-hmm. And another thing with the Madison music scene, that's I mean it's it's good for some things, but um, there's a a bigger uh, music company that kind of I'd let, I want to say kind of like bought out a lot of the places and is in control of like who plays where. Really? So yeah, I don't want to mention the name because I don't want to. No, no, don't mention the name. Well, so that just makes it hard for other bands to get gigs. Yeah, it seems like they they want more national acts than local. Mm. Oh, okay. You know, so. Yeah. Well, they probably, you know, they know how sometimes, so, you know, the the locals don't support the locals. This is, yeah, this is, this is true. Yeah, that's what happens. I, I know. It's, a, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, you know, then, you know, then you get, you get, you get a group of bands where you could make a scene and then they, you know, they start booking shows on the, the opposite, the same night, some shows going on somewhere else or, you know, they get some kind of little rivalry going, and the next thing you know, you know that stuff catches fire, and that's what that's what kills a good scene from happening. Yeah, rivalries are just uh, life's too short. You know, it's like right. yeah, it it just it just sucks that they have to happen. I know they happen. It just sucks that they have to happen. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, there's been places where we've played, 
And then I, you know, this is from hearsay, but I hear that there is, that one band told this one person, oh, we don't, you know, I hope you don't think that they're going to keep on playing here. This city is our turf or something. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's like, we're just here to, to, to play. Someone, know? Someone told you guys that? Yeah, that was up north. Oh, okay. That was up, up north. Kind of closer to my hometown, which I was really excited to play. And we had a fun time, but then I, I, I heard that and I was like, it kind of made me feel good for the band because I was like, well, you know, this is our first time playing here. If we have other bands worried that we're going to take over, I guess that's kind of a compliment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. That's insane. Uh, you know, it never surprises me when you know, but when you're dealing with, uh, you know, when you're dealing with artists and musicians and that, there's always there got to be that drama for some reason. Yeah, and it, it's really just, especially different, uh, like different regions just have different. Like for instance, like I said, more up north, it's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of cover bands. You know, like it's it's hard for like an original band to get a, sh a to play there. You know, which I always found kind of weird. But uh, so I think that had a lot to do with this. It was a, a cover band that didn't like us playing at the venue that mostly cover bands play. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, just the cover band thing isn't too. <laughs> I do like to throw covers in every once in a while. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of bands, they get that's how they get over sometimes is by, uh, you know, they do a cover or something and. But I then I <clears throat> see bands that are already on the radio, and they 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 made, did a bunch of originals got on the radio. And all of a sudden, they start doing cover songs. I'm like, come on, what's up with that? And especially, they make some really bad choices and play some of that yeah, really uh, overplayed, supposed mm -hmm. classic rock garbage. You know, mm -hmm. there was a. I wanted to see a. I, I don't know if you know of the band Hatebreed. They're pretty heavy. Yeah. But I wanted to. I wanted to see them at. Uh, oh, what was it? It was at. Mayhem or something like that um, in uh, Chicago, and I know like Rob Zombie was playing in Corn and and uh, Hatebreed was supposed to be on the main stage with them, and because uh, I'll say it, I, whatever, because of um, Five Finger Death Punch at the at the time had um, Bad Company that remake a Bad Company song. Yeah, yeah, that got so popular. Then they put Five Finger Death Punch on the main stage and kicked Kate Breed off of the stage. And I already bought the tickets, and I was so ticked. Oh, wow. Isn't that something? Like, it's like Five Finger Death Punch, you know, they're pretty popular. They're going to get a chance to play all a bunch of shows. Let Hate Breed, you know, have a chance. But Yeah. 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 Well, they were they were kind of, hey, uh, that, I like that band for a while. And then, like you said, they pay, start playing all them covers and... Uh, well, what are you gonna do? Yeah, I, I, you know, I was born, you know, raised on the punk stuff. So, and then uh, the post punk and the the goth and all that stuff. So, you know, that whole that whole mess of all the eighties hair bands and all that stuff. I was never that was. Yeah, never, we had to we had to play the the Bauhaus cover for you. Yeah. Oh you. my gosh, that was amazing! That was cool. I fangirled so much. That was so great. <laughs> yeah, that one. You know, and we all, we also know a few uh, Sisters of Mercy songs, but every time we try to play one, because there's there's parts where the guitar stops and then it starts back up. If we can't hear this, if I can't hear Night Stalker sing, it's really hard for me to know when I got start and stop because mm -hmm. cause, cause like for instance, the song Lucretia, My Reflection. That's one mm -hmm. of them that we cover. And he sings, there's a lot of times where he sings so low that whenever we've tried to cover it at, like, a club or a bar, their uh, PA monitor is so quiet for the singer, I can't hear him. So I'm just kind of, like, going by instinct, and it's not the same, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Very good. All right, well, we're going to get to, we're going to play some of your tunes and whatnot after this next break. You going to stick with us? Sure, I can stick with you. All Thank right. You so All right, much. we'll play some Fiendish Phantoms after these messages. Live and local, this is AM 1050 WLIP. 
Dr. Destruction's Big Top Radio Broadcast. After Midnight, WLIP. Thank you, thank you. We'll be on tomorrow, too. Uh, thank you all for coming. All right, we are back, and we are talking to the caretaker from the fiendish Phantoms Band. How you doing? Yeah. You made it through the break. Okay. Well, you made oh, yeah. it. Well, we almost went through the first two hours of the show. Can you believe it, how fast it goes once you get going? Time goes by. It does. And we're going to play this track. Uh, I, I love this one. It's called Mad Scientist. Can you give us a little background on uh, the tune Mad Scientist by the Fiendish Phantoms? Mad Scientist is actually a song that all of us wrote. And it's basically, if you listen to the lyrics, it basically says what we all do in the band for the Mad Scientist outside of playing our instruments. Okay. okay. All right, let's roll with this now. Mad Scientist by the Fiendish Phantoms.
Hi, we got a little mad scientist going on there. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it's very cool stuff. So what inspired that song? Uh, hmm. Well, we wanted to have a song to tell this, to tell our uh, very old and very long story of what we did before we were a band. And that is also when a mad scientist joined the band because other bassists just would disappear. They wouldn't explode like the drummers in Spinal Tap, but they would disappear. All right. I, you know, I'm a little bit scared here, but I think we have a phone call uh, coming in. Oh. Uh, do, we have a, do we have a caller on the line? Well, hello there. Oh, how are you doing tonight? I can just imagine. <laughs> Who, who's calling us? Uh, who's this? Oh, who's, who's this young whoopersnapper you're talking to there? One of them fiendish guys, right? No, well, this is pretty fiendish, yes. How you doing, Mr. Freak Show? <laughs> I can't put nothing over on you, can I? <laughs> uh, well, we have caller ID. Yes. <laughs> oh. Oh, you should have rolled with it. it. Huh? The Star 69 doesn't work anymore? <laughs> I guess not. So how are you doing, Mr. Freak Show? Good to hear your oh, voice. I'm, just, I'm doing fantastic. How are you guys doing? We're doing really good, and this is a Freak Show. as a very popular television show showing the late-night horror movies in Madison, Wisconsin, and uh, uh, that's been going. You've been doing that for quite a while now uh, over the air, huh? Oh, yeah, too long. Is it? Too long. <laughs> okay. We're going on our fourth year. Wow, that's incredible. Over the air. Over the air, it's been, I'm, yeah, it's been since like 2009. Otherwise, 2009, what a year, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, what do you guys got going on tonight? Uh, well, we're playing some uh, fiendish phantoms, and we're talking about a couple of upcoming shows and horror movies and all that sort of thing. You know, I, I'm listening to that song, um, "Mad Scientist." Yeah, it's a good and song. That's the exact. That's the exact same riff that we had. In a band called Chaos in like 1985. Oh, what are you trying to say? No, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Great I've never heard of them. Right? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's plagiarism. I know. Oh, I, know I, like. I know. It's just like you know. It's just like that. That you know. The, Hello. There. It's just like that, that. That song Ed, where they use one of my guitar parts too. I'm wondering what's up with that. Yeah, it happens. There's it only happens. so many riffs out there. What well, can you do? The, well, I don't know. There's only so uh, many notes. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding there, uh, caretaker. You know that, right? Do we lose him? Who do we got? Uh oh. Uh <laughs> did you cut? Did you cut the caretaker off? No way. There's no way I cut the caretaker off. Something must have happened. Caretaker? There, he's playing us. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I don't Where know. Where did he go? The nefarious green one. You may be a curse. Where did he go? Yeah, now oh, I no. can hear you guys. Are All you... I heard was that the oh, you had to turn like the radio off. Uh, yeah, he, 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 sometimes they turn down the radio when they, you know, they don't want to hear certain things. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Nobody wants to hear my voice. That's for sure. So no, anyway, but, uh, where were we? But, about the mad scientist, uh, certain riffs sounding like um, from a band that Freak Show was in. Oh, that's where, yeah. That's oh, yeah, it's like 84, 85, 86, something like that, way back oh. when. I think I might have a cassette tape of it somewhere I'll play for you sometime. So you were in a band, yeah, uh, Freak Show, you were in a band too? I've been in numerous bands. Yeah. What do you play? I play guitar. Oh, okay, do you still play? I haven't played since 2006. We had a Judas Priest tribute band called Grinder. <laughs> Grinder, looking for meat. The last, right? the last show we played was the High Noon Halloween, and there was like 450 people there. It was oh. awesome. Oh, wow. Sue. Yeah, it's all cool. Yeah, I remember you were kind of, speaking of uh, uh, rivalries and uh, whatnot, you were uh, you were throwing it out there uh, to Carlos Borloff. Uh, some, you were talking about... Uh, I don't know, having a showdown on guitar with him or something. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos, oh, if you're listening, you can call, too. <laughs> who knows with that guy? <laughs> He's crazy. He's insane. Well, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. 
So, hey, I was looking up. I, I know what you're talking about, the loft. Yeah, the loft. Madison. Did you play there? Oh, several times. Yeah, it was up off like Fairchild, right up by the Capitol. Yep, exactly. You could see, yeah, and, right right down the road there. And then they moved it to East Washington. Um, and now it's actually homed inside the Goodman Community Center. Okay. But so you have to, still- like, book the room through the community center. It's It's all weird now. Yeah, it's not as cool as it used to be. Nothing. Is it called the Art Inn, or is that something different? No, the Art Inn is where uh, we actually have the studio for Bordello of Horror in the basement of the Art Inn now. Oh, really? Yeah, no, the um, the loft is over. The Goodman Community Center is off Wabisa, right off of Atwood. Mm, okay. oh, it's wow. a huge building with a bunch of different spaces, and they've got one space that's designed for music, music and bands and... Whatever you didn't want to do in there. Have, Performance art. They used to have 18 and up there? Uh, it's the all ages. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah those yeah. are sometimes those are the most fun shows to play. Oh, yeah. I was, looking, I was looking at it, and it looks like they try and get the shows done around 8 or 9. So you could actually do an early show and then a later show in a bar. Yeah. If you wanted to. Well, we should hook that up. Come on, you guys. I want to get, Maybe when it gets a little warmer up, we come back. I'd can. I I'd love to revisit Madison. I'm sure I'd run into a few... Uh, a uh, few characters up there. A lot of adventures uh, in the Madison area. No. Yeah, yeah, what, what do you think, Freak Show? We bring, the doc- we bring the doctor to Madison for a night. Oh, the doctor is in. All right. Yeah, insane, that is. Uh, there you go. You're right. We bring the- <laughs> well, you've got the uh, the capital of insanity up there. Huh? <laughs> you Ooh. know, it's so hard to get people out to shows in the summertime, though. Well, I, no, I didn't mean that warm. Okay, I'm thinking April warm. You know, we we want we want to you know we want to get that's people only a couple months away. Exactly, the spring fever kind of warm when people are sick again. You know, it gets a little bit nice out, and they want to go out finally again. You know, summer it's all about them festivals and everything. Everybody's in the bag by nine o'clock. You don't want to play. You know, unless you're playing festivals, you don't want to book any gigs for summer. Exactly. Yeah. You know you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about all too well. Although, you know, June 23rd, we did the Phoenix Phantom CD release party. We had a great crowd there. Yeah, that was that was a really really good good fun time. It can be really it can be really hit and miss though. I know what you're saying. But well, the- I know we can get a we can get a pretty good crowd because uh well, one main reason we haven't been able to play Madison for probably since the CD release party to tell you the truth. Hey, uh, caretaker, do you know of a band called the Glass Ghosts in Madison? I, I'm not sure. I know I heard some. there's a band something. Is there Ghost Socket, too, though? Maybe that's who I'm thinking. I just saw that name also. Oh, okay. But the Glass Ghosts have been around for a while, and I think they used to draw pretty well. Okay. I don't know. We could talk about it at some time. I just wanted to pop in and say, hey, the, the, the loft is still there. Okay. So there's all ages venue and uh, the art and I can always book a show there because we basically live there now. Well, let's work on something. That'd be fun. I'd really be, a, be awesome. a great time. And uh, so Frito, April, do you, know, thinking, do you huh? know about that? Oh, sorry. Do you know about that uh, Twisted Film Festival that's going on in April? Well, I, I I do a little bit. It's in that. We've been to the Twisted Film Festival once. Yeah, and I hear you doing that event in April. Uh, Spank away cancer. That's coming. Yeah. Up, yeah, that's coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, are you uh, at the? Uh, that's at Frank's Power Plant on April ninth. Uh, April, <laughs> February 9th, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really wish we could make it down to that. We got, we got. Yeah, they're looking for somebody to spank. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? I said they're looking yeah, for somebody yeah, to bring on stage and spank uh, the guy. They're looking for. Well, I'm, I'm always up for that. You guys know that. <laughs> they're looking for like four people. I know. I know. My band tried to nominate me while I was like not on the. <laughs> they were all the trying to nominate you. <laughs> you were being volunteered. <laughs> so what's going on for that event? It looks like a whole bunch of stuff. Well, there's a whole bunch of dancers, and I think some burlesque. Uh, the, you know, I'm playing a little bit. I'll be there, and the Fiendish Phantoms are there, and uh, some other oh, bands man. and stuff. And Yeah, it's going to be a happening. And it's, all, and it's all for a good cause. It's all for a good cause, you know, for Christopher Kai House. And uh, the what I can tell you about the, the uh, Twisted Dreams Film Festival this year is at the... At, uh, 
Time Cinema on Vliet Street in Milwaukee. And uh, that's in April, and that's going to be a cool event, cool film festival. He's really cool that uh, Christopher has brought that to Milwaukee and filled the void that it needed. And, uh, and he's going to have um, the guy from Troma, correct? Uh, yeah, what, uh, Lloyd Kaufman? Lloyd? Yeah. Lloyd's going to be there? Yes. See? Oh, Lloyd and I go way back. Oh, there you All go. All the way back to, like, 2009. Oh, what do we got to do to get you there? Uh, I don't know. What's the date? Uh, is that a, April is that a 13th, 14th, and 15th. Oh, that's right. It starts off April, uh, Friday the 13th, Friday, April. Yep. Hmm. All right, we'll look into that. Yeah, look into it. We can do things. We, we were at the we were at the first one that he did. Uh huh. Down in the bowels of the Grand Avenue Mall. Right, right. That was that was kind of a cool little spot. Yeah, that's actually a cool spot. But, but the, I, the Times the Times Theater that's that's a groovy spot from what I've heard. Well, it, it's a very cool spot, and it's it's it, I think it lends itself much better to you know that uh, to a, a film festival. It's b better suited for that, I believe. And what Lloyd's going to be there? Is he showing uh, Return to Return to Newcomb High, aka Volume Two? I don't know. We that we have that's, to. Ask. That's the new one they got out. I think. Okay. Well, I, well, I know because um, uh, Doctor Destruction had uh, Christopher on. I, I do remember hearing. I was half asleep, but I do listen to your show, Doctor Destruction. I was just half asleep. Uh -huh. <laughs> but um. I remember him saying that he that Lloyd told him that he could pick any of his new films to show. I remember that. Oh, well, I was actually go. I was actually trying to get Lloyd up here for Return to Return to Newcomb High, and I called six times. I emailed six times. I Facebooked Lloyd and his assistant. Nobody ever answered me back. Well, that shows. Maybe, you. maybe I left a bad taste in his mouth last time we talked. Probably the craps, but uh, oh, that might have been it. They're they're a little pesky sometimes, especially those royal king crabs. I probably shouldn't have brought that up, but anyways, where where, where are the crickets? I hear crickets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I just wanted to drop in and say hi to you guys. Okay, um, I'll let you be. I'll, I'll let you go on your way, and yeah, let's figure something out. Hopefully for April. All right, sounds good. Keep in touch. Yeah. All right, have a good show. All right, you too. Thanks for calling us. Take care. Night, guys. Night. All yep. right, there he goes. <laughs> the nefarious green one. Well, that gives yeah, us a little bit cool. of... Yeah, that, well, yeah <laughs> that was pretty cool. So maybe we can get some events. Let's let's play one more uh, Fiendish Phantoms, of course, the big hit, if that's okay. That is that is fine. It's a, it's about a, a legend of Wisconsin. Oh, it's you know, it's what makes Wisconsin great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I believe it. Is it going? What kind of trance you got? Oh, there we go. Listen to that bass.
After Destruction's uh, <laughs> Big Top Radio broadcast. Uh, and we're talking to the caretaker. I think we got about enough time to say goodbye. Yeah, well, I appreciate it, and thanks for playing the music and having Freak Show on. That was a pleasant surprise. Uh, always a uh, pleasant surprise to be embraced, to be thought of by the nefarious green one from Madison. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Very cool. All right. Thank you again for so much for being on. And uh, uh, we certainly will be doing things in the future. Of course, our next show is at that Kolchanski's in Milwaukee. And that's March 10th. And it's going to be a salute to Milwaukee Horror Hosts as well as who knows, maybe even some other surprises coming up for that show. You betcha. I, it will be horror. And the people will have to tune in or they will have to tune out. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're going to tune in. You, you oh, bet. Yeah. That's right. They're tuning in. So thanks again so okay. much for being on. You have a great, yes, great so morning. All right, and we'll all right. be we'll you, be in touch. You both take care. All right, you too. Thank all you. All right, that was a double header tonight. Uh, not yeah. only we get the caretaker, uh, we get free show the nefarious green one. He goes green. He likes the color red though too. You know, it's kind of a Christmas theme for horror, but yeah. you know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to challenge the nefarious green one's taste in uh, no. color or clothes. Right. Right. All right.